Okay guys, I'm starting the install of the grill. Here's the painted grill, here's the factory chrome. Nasty grill. Now to get this grill out, all you really need to do is take out the top plastic part, this plastic shield right here, tray, whatever you want to call it, it fits over the radiator support right here. And there's like 10 pop-in uh, pop screws that you just push in, push pins, pop these out and uh, the whole, that whole sound will come loose. Now to get the grill out, there is a 10 millimeter bolt right here up top. I've already taken it out and the rest is actually, it's just snaps in. So you can see there's a clip right here. There's a clip down there, which is loose. It's down there. Way down there, you can see it. Okay, there's so there's clip on the left side, two of those, same two clips on the right, and then there's two clips here in the very corner, which I don't know if you can see because of the light, but I'm gonna have to get a screwdriver and loosen that clip up by popping that little tab. And that should be it. Oh, and to remove the lights, there's two pins that hold in the headlight. Here's one of them. You just pull them out, twist them to the left, pull them out, up, remove the headlight, disconnect your bulbs. And then on the bottom, you just push in from right here. There's, there's a tab here you push in on, and that loosens the whole assembly. And then you push over here. There's another tab. Hold on. There's another tab right there. You pull that out and remove the lights. So getting this truck apart really doesn't take too long. It's just all the little clips and everything. And I'll be honest, wear gloves because there's a lot of jagged stuff in here that you could cut yourself on. Continuation of the install video. I have the grill installed. I swapped over the GMC logo from the 2500 grill. And I also installed the black billet grill that I had painted black. As you can see, I got the uh, driver's side headlight and all that in, passenger side light. Really, this uh, grill is pretty simple to put in. Uh, you just have the clips, like I showed earlier when you disassembled it. Clips on top and bottom. Clips on top and bottom. There's a 10 millimeter screw right here that I need to put in. And then there's also the clip over here on the side. Oops. And then, yeah. And then there's the clip back here on the side, so. But, anyway, uh, here's the half of the grill. I will finish the rest up in a second. Okay guys, here's the final install of the 1500 painted upper grill on my truck. Forgive my truck, it's super filthy. As you can see, I, uh, I just use some quick detailer to clean off the front end a little bit and take some pictures, but overall I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Anyway, I ended up peeling the plastic dip off the chrome just to accent, you know, break up the all black a little bit because I knew this front end was going to get real dark real quick, so overall I'm pretty happy. One problem I ran into was the back of the 1500 grill. I thought that I was going to be able to use the spacer. There's a black plastic spacer off the 2500 grill. But I'll show you. This spacer is all integrated into the plastic trim surround for the 2500 front grill. I didn't know that. I thought this was a separate piece and I should have taken it off before I started this project, but oh well. This actually um, will help me solve another problem that I've had. Oh, and you can see this broke, this has been broke for a while, that upper screw hole. So back to the truck, I have this huge two. three inch gap, four inch gap that the, cause I have a 1500 grill on a 2500 truck. So what I'm gonna do is actually the same as I did the back bumper. 
I, because I have a 1500, 2014 1500 bumper on the back, all I ended up doing was raising it two inches. So I'm going to take the front bumper off this truck and move it up and fill in that gap. But for today, for tonight, I mean, it's already six o'clock and it's dark out. So, but that is the future plan. I'll do that probably sometime. I got a long weekend, so probably sometime this weekend. But anyway, here's the overall shot of the grill. And the paint match is spot on. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference in the clear coat. Like the GMC paint has a higher clear in it. And my front bumper or this front grill has, it has a shine to it, definitely. But... You know, this is what you're going to get with using rattle can paints instead of using a, a, a 2K clear. But, you know what, for the overall look I'm going for, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm trying to go for like that Midnight Series, uh, the Black Series, whatever they call it, that the newer, like 2015, 2014 and newer, the Chevrolets do it. I'm pretty sure the GMC does it the same thing where they just black out the bow tie, black out the grill, and call it a day. That's kind of like the look I'm going for. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with the bumper. I was going to get a steel bumper that wasn't chrome, paint it, do the same as I did the rear bumper, and now the upper grill. I was going to paint it and, um, you know, put it up. But now that I got this problem, I'm going to take the bumper off and see what see what's going to have to happen because if I have to order another one, I really I really don't want to be tearing this thing apart like two or three times. So I might be buying a new bumper, painting it, and drilling those holes and installing it. We'll see. I think I saw the front bumper on eBay for like hundred bucks, eighty dollars. It, it wasn't too expensive. It was pretty cheap, and the lower fascia fascia however you want to say that mine is actually kind of screwed up like someone this happened I didn't do this someone ended up hitting something and uh, screwing the bumper up so I might end up buying a new front fascia too but that I don't know that's a lot of real estate to be spray painting I may have to look into a different setup I've got an 80 gallon compressor. You know, I, I've been avoiding buying a paint gun and the dryer, the air oil separator and all that. I, I don't know, like that's a whole lot of real estate to spray paint that. We'll see. My only problem with the um, lower fascia, the bumper I could do, the bumper's not that thick. It's you know what, three inches by three inches. It's got some curves in it. That's not really what I'm afraid about. My, what I'm afraid about is the lower bumper is having to paint all of that and all those angles because there is a ton. It's not just like one part. It's, you know, top, goes up, out, down, around. and I don't know, we'll see see what budget says like i'll be honest i have maybe four cans of primer four cans of base four cans of clear now i had some of these supplies from previous projects so i really for this project i only bought two cans of base those were six dollars each seven dollars so that's 14 bucks for base the primer i bought one can so that's seven 14 21 dollars and then i bought i think i only bought one can of clear maybe two so i've got maybe so that's 21 another 14 what 35 dollars give or take yeah so i mean i got less than 40 dollars for this whole project and the bumper and the uh the grill itself was only 68 dollars shipped 58 dollars plus 10 dollars shipped yeah 68 dollars shipped off of uh partsgeek.com or partsgeek.net it was some random website i hadn't heard about and for 60 bucks i was willing to risk it i actually paid through paypal and then 
when I paid my credit, I, I used my credit card through PayPal. So I had some protection in case I had to uh, fight the charge. But you know, uh, Parts Geek sent me the grill out and I got it within a couple days. Actually, it shipped from Charlotte. So I got it from, I got it from in town, even though it took like a week. <laughs> but hey, whatever. So that's the overall top end install of the grill. Like I said in the past, you know, please subscribe. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that. And thanks for watching this video.